Well, it's Wednesday, and I'd like to welcome you to Wednesday Words. We started a study last week, and our study began uh, in our book by Robert Morgan, Mastering Life Before It's Too Late, 10 Principles That Will Help uh, Strategies for a Lifetime of Purpose. Our first strategy was found in the life of Jesus. It was called Listen to a 12-Year-Old. It was when Jesus was in the temple. He had got disconnected from his family after Passover, and uh, they came looking for him. Finally, after three days, found him. And Jesus, they said, where have you been? And Jesus' first recorded words were these as a 12-year-old boy. Why are you searching for me? Don't you know I had to be about my father's business? That's the first strategy. Being about the father's business. Being aware that God is is around us. And there are people he's called us to uh, to minister to and to serve and to serve him through serving others. And so today I want to continue that thought because there's much more to be said about this being about the Father's business. How can we do that? And uh, we can't do it in huge segments of time. And Robert Morgan says what we need to think of in terms is think of it in one day segments, small segments of time, doing what God has called us to do. As a matter of fact, he said one of the best ways to do it is get up every day. And as the psalmist said, say, Lord, today is the day uh, you have made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Or maybe our prayers like the Apostle Paul when he said in Acts 22, he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And so we've been given these days to honor and glorify the Lord. And we want to put them into, into, into our life and master life. And we can do that if we'll spend time seeking to please the Lord, honor him in every day that he gives us. Elizabeth Fry was known as the angel of prison. She had started the prison reform system in the 19th century England, and she had made them more humane. And she affirmed that she had never awakened from sleep, whether in sickness or in health, without first thinking and the thought, how best may I serve my Lord? What a great statement. How best may I serve the Lord? Do you get up? Is that your first thought in the morning? Or are you just trying to get out of bed? Maybe that's something that all of us who are followers of Christ ought to be able to say each morning, Lord, today's the day you've given me. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to honor you. How can I serve you today? What is the best way to do it? Ira Sankey was a great hymn writer who wrote many of our hymns. He wrote of a washerwoman who was passing by a mission chapel, heard a group of children singing this song, One more day's work for Jesus, one less of life for me, but heaven is near and Christ is clearer than yesterday to me. The next day she began pondering those words that were sung by those children, and she thought, Have I ever done one day's work for Jesus in all my life? That marked a turning point for her. She said from there she began doing her work each day for the Lord. She washed clothes for Jesus. She cleaned the house for Jesus. She took care of her family for Jesus. She put into practice Colossians 3 when Paul says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for humans. One thing that we can do each day is that we can honor the Lord, seek to please him. As the psalmist said, one thing I ask from the Lord, that only do I seek from him, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. You know, that phrase, one thing, is found in several places. One thing that I do, one thing you lack, Jesus told those looking to know him. One thing I know, the psalmist said, God is for me. Paul said, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, looking forward to the what is ahead and pressing on toward the goal to win the prize. One thing, Paul said in Philippians, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're to live each day as if we're giving it to the Lord. Every day has been given to us by him. So we're to live for him each day. And not in yesterday, not tomorrow, we are to focus on the daily nature of faithful living. The proverb writer said, do not boast about tomorrow. You don't know what a day may bring. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And so we're to focus on the day that God has given us. We really want to master life. You're going to focus in on what day God has given you. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote this. 
finish each day before you begin the next and interpose a solid wall of sleep between the two. This you cannot do without temperance. So just for today, we can be pleasantly productive. Just for today, we can be faithful. We can resist temptation. We can be joyful and choose that way to live for Jesus. Just for today, we can be about our Father's business. John Maxwell is a great leadership guru of our day, and he's written several books on leadership. He was a pastor, and now he leads conferences and workshops. He touched on the day or the nature of day-by-day -day living in his book, Today Matters. He says there are only a handful of important decisions people need to make in their entire lifetime. If you make those decisions in these key areas, then every day you just manage those decisions daily. You create the kind of tomorrow you desire. Successful people, he said, make right decisions early and manage those decisions daily. He goes on to say that some people, most people, exaggerate yesterday and overestimate tomorrow. They have no control over either. We can't change yesterday, and we can't depend on tomorrow. Today is the only day we have. If we want to do something with our lives, we must focus on today. The secret of our success is determined by our daily agenda. You'll never change your life until you change something you do daily. And so as we consider mastering life, through this process of managing our daily lives, seeking to honor Christ, living one day at a time, and seeking uh, to understand that today is the day God has given us. We're going to honor him, rejoice, and be glad in it. If we'll begin each day with a prayer, Lord, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We'll be well on our way to honoring the Lord and to serving him in each and every single day. Matthew Henry was a great Bible commentator. He said these words on his deathbed in 1714. He said, you've been used to take notice of the sayings of dying men. This is mine, that a life spent in the service of God and communion with him is the most pleasant life that anyone can live in this world. You may not have all the answers about the future. You may be frustrated about tomorrow's uncertain forecast, but today... Today, you can be about the Father's business. Just for today, you can be pleasantly productive and you can be enthusiastic about life. Jesus Christ desires for you to honor and glorify his Father each and every day. My prayer is that we will think like a 12-year-old. We'll be about the Father's business. We'll take it in one-day segments and honor him and get up each and every day and say, Lord, today is the day you've given me. I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to look for ways that I can best serve you. God bless you this week as you put into practice this wonderful biblical strategy of, of, of taking each day and honoring the Lord in that day. I want to close today just giving you a couple of announcements saying thank you to our church family. Continue to uh, thank you for what you're doing through giving, through encouraging, supporting our church during this time. Uh, we, again, will have services this coming Sunday, 8.30 and 10.30, and it's Father's Day. We want to say Happy Father's Day to all those fathers out there. I know Father's Day sometimes has uh, a difficult time for a lot of people. Their father's no longer living or deceased or uh, they've been estranged or whatever, uh, but one of the things that we all, as followers of Christ can say we have a wonderful heavenly father and the book of first John says see how great the love the father has bestowed on us and so we're going to celebrate father's day on Sunday but more importantly we're going to celebrate the heavenly father we had a great time during our Lord's Supper last week and I hope you participated if you weren't able to be here uh, we'd like to invite you to come to one of our services 8 30 or 10 10 30 and uh, we'll have a great time together this week. And so a lot of other things going on, a lot of prayer needs in our church family. Continue to pray for Vic and Ruth this week and praying for, uh, praying for our secretary, Judy. Judy West had surgery today and uh, on her knee, and she'll be recovering over this next week. Pray for her. Uh, we're so thankful for each of you. Pray for Grover Waller's been in the hospital. Sharon Weber's been in the hospital. Uh, there are a lot of needs, and uh, thank you to the Sunday school classes that continue to meet on Zoom and all the things that you're doing. Continue to pray for our nation. We need it. Pray for this pandemic and for the changes that seemingly, seemingly take place each day. 
but we're going to honor the Lord and thank God that he is on the throne, still in control, and we look to please him each and every day. Let me pray for us as we leave. Father, we're thankful for the day. We thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you that this is the day that you've made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Bless all those who watch, and Father, we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.